Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. But how do you win? This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. There was a time, deep in history, when early man began his dominance of nature. What separated us from all the other animals? What protected us from wild beasts and from each other? What single factor helped us not just to survive as a species, but to triumph? You may not like the answer. Weapons. Now we have to find out how our primitive ancestors beat the odds in the battle of the species. We'll learn how to win with Stone Age weapons. All right, guys. Sean, if you come over here. Kristen, over there. Here are two magnificent specimens of the human animal, right? But you have very few advantages compared to other animals. Size, you're not big enough to scare them off. Speed, you can't outrun them. You haven't the strength to fight with them. You don't have sharp teeth or claws. You don't even have a shell to hide in. Physically, you are completely useless. But what have you got? Brains. Well, some of us have more than others, but yeah, brains. And our ancestors used their brains to make two vital evolutionary advances. One was to use fire. The other was to use tools, and some of the earliest tools were weapons. And our challenge is to learn how to win with Stone Age weapons. And when we've gained some knowledge, we're going to use that knowledge to go out hunting, all right? So I'm going to send you out there now into the wild, and I want you to find some natural materials to bring back here and to make weapons with. To be honest, we've given the team some modern hatchets and saws to do the job. After all, we need to squeeze several hundred thousand years of progress into a single 30-minute time slot. Most of our team have gone for the first weapon of all, the wooden stick. It seems simple, but not any old stick will do. Early man was forced to assess which kinds of wood were better than others, and just how he would use his new weapon. If he chose a straight piece like this, he'd have a light and handy weapon. But for hunting and killing, he'd need something heavier, preferably with all the weight at one end. Now, this would be good for clubbing and also for throwing. And it's mainly throwing weapons that our team are collecting. Of course, man's brain allowed him to do more than just pick up sticks off the forest floor. Our team's brains are serving them likewise. Using the simple tools we've given them, they are modifying their finds to make what they think will work as weapons. Early man did the same thing using stone tools. It simply took him longer to finish the job. OK, so here we have an entire arsenal of the earliest, most primitive weapons. We've got a lot of different sorts of clubs here. Here's a weird-looking one. Whose is this? I can say with confidence that our team is at least on the right track. Some of their found objects seem wonderful for bashing. What a horrible mind you have. There we have the basic bone club. Others are clearly intended to cut and stab. There's this, which was just picked up off the ground. Um, this is, I don't know, a jawbone or something. And there's one over here which was clearly made by a sadist. <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible for this? That would be me. <laughs> OK, I'm going to have to keep out of your way. Got a nice sharp point there. The problem is you've made it out of dead wood. That's going to snap in no time at all. Now, we have to start using our brains because our survival as a species depends on us getting these weapons right. So let's pick up the weapons and go and find a target and see if they work. Here we go. We are ten paces away from our target, which is made from a couple of hay bales covered with animal hide. We are pitching our clubs and spears to see what kind of damage we might have done to a real animal at a time when our ancestors depended on this sort of thing if they wanted to eat. All right. Look at this lot. I think you could honestly say that we are completely useless at this, right? <laughs> of all of those weapons, only two actually hit and pierced the target. 
So what went wrong? Despite our team's hard work and their performance as brave Stone Age hunters, their weapons were neither sharp enough nor strong enough to do the job. Now to learn what they must do to fix the problem. We have to find a way of making these points sharper. And for that, we need fire. So I want you two to go away and make some fire for us. There's one more thing, which is that we're supposed to be in a Stone Age, people. Where's the stone? Early man's first weapons were wood and stone, especially flint and this glass-like rock called obsidian. Some flakes of stone can be amazingly sharp, and some blocks of it occur naturally in an easily handled D shape, with one rounded edge and one sharp. Man discovered he could make other useful shapes on demand, just by knocking a hard stone against flint. Working with stone in this way is known as napping, and using this new technique, our ancestors created one of their most important early inventions, the hand axe. The hand axe is a tool designed to fit into a man's hand. It's an all-purpose implement for um, cutting, chopping up wood, carving up game, scraping flesh from hides. It's also extremely good for um, preparing breakfast. Two of our team members are now busy with their fire-making project, but rubbing stones together simply will not do. Instead, I'm going to offer them a different tool. Here is a bow drill. This is the base. The idea is to cause as much friction as possible in that base and uh, create fire that way. So in order to make some embers, we rub that really hard, put some moss around there so that'll catch fire. Put this little top on there so we can hold it. And if you put your foot on there so it doesn't move, all right, let's try this. Here we go. Now, this takes some time, so I'm going to let you do it. All right. Starting a fire is very difficult. The friction has to heat the wood to 800 degrees before it will start to smolder. The bow drill's string is made of twisted sinew and was one of early man's ingenious uses of animals. Every dead creature had a huge number of byproducts for Stone Age man. The larger bones provided ready-made clubs, sharp antlers, horns or teeth could all become weapons, and strips of sinew and hide were both very useful. But fire Good, was man's greatest Excellent. tool well of all. So here's where we are. We've made our own hand axes, which were used to sharpen our wooden spears. Next, we harden the points in our fire and hone them by rubbing them against stone. But there's more to a spear than a fire-hardened point. Which designs work best? Short spears may be good for stabbing, but our team can see that longer spears, even crude ones, are better for throwing. Throwing the spear at an elevation gives it tremendous speed and force as it falls. But hitting a moving animal requires skill, practice and patience. We'll now give it a try on our own hunting grounds. All right, are we ready for this? Yeah! All-out assault. Our families are starving. We haven't eaten for days. There is dinner. Are we ready? Ready. ready. Let's go! Coming up, who survives, the team or their prey? Our team have become Stone Age hunters, using the crudest of wooden weapons to attack wild game on the open plain. All right, all right, hold it there. So we've got to our bear here, and we've got our hand axes ready to carve him up. The problem is the bear isn't hurt at all. <laughs> all right, those of us who did manage to hit our friendly creature here wouldn't have pierced through his hide. Primitive man is ready for his next giant step forward. The application of technology. Early man had to find a way to make his weapons more effective. Now, as he was working with his hand axes, he must have noticed these shards of stone, really sharp. Now, out of these, he could create blades and points of all types. As his skill improved, he could produce flakes of stone up to a foot long. Now, these would be kept sharpened at one end, and the other blunt end would be wrapped in hide to create a basic dagger. 
With time, the working of stone became a true art, and the master craftsmen of prehistory produced a wide variety of blades and points finished to an astonishing level of detail and beauty. I keep saying how razor sharp stone can be, and to prove it, I need a shave. Now, we usually try and avoid bloodshed in this program, but this time it may be unavoidable. Ah, well, it's not very comfortable, but at least it works. This is a breakthrough. Early man can shave. And what's more, he now had the means to make a whole new armory by combining all the techniques that he'd learnt. And our team are emulating their ancestors, using bindings, natural glues and wood to create stone-tipped weapons more lethal than anything that had come before. Some weapons probably came about by accident. Now, if you want a fire to burn better, you blow on it. It's much better to blow underneath it, so you get a hollow piece of bamboo, you shove it in and you blow on it. And then something gets stuck in your piece of bamboo, so you blow it out. And hey, you've invented the pea shooter. And then someone gets a really brilliant idea. He cuts a bamboo, hollows it out, makes a small projectile with a flint point, binds some material to one end, and he has invented the blowpipe and dart. <laughs> and while the first victim may have been the butt of laughter, things took a more serious turn when the dart was covered with one of the natural poisons man was also finding out about. Turning a practical joke into a lethal weapon. But our team have spent most of their time making spears and there's still much to improve upon. Now, we all agreed we had to get more range with our spears, right? Now, early man could see how a sling worked, and he was beginning to understand basic aerodynamics. So, first, he tried tying his sling onto the spear as a sort of throwing strap to get more velocity. He could also try getting a piece of hide and wrapping it in a spiral around the spear. Now, when he threw it like this, it made the spear spin, which made it fly straighter. These uh, flights and feathers on the butt, these were a good idea too. But the best idea of all is this. Now, this little thing is a spear thrower. It's called an atle atle. This is how it works. This little hook goes into the notch at the base of the spear. Do you remember how we found it difficult even reaching that target before? Well, this little machine increases velocity up to five times. Have a look at this. Though it is not easy to master, the team catches on to use of the spear thrower quickly. By exerting force through a longer arc than the arm can provide, it casts the spear further than ever before. Now we have a whole new world of technology and experience being applied to our weapons. Our bear is in serious trouble. But who are we kidding? Your ancestors did not use these weapons just for hunting animals. They used them to kill each other. Stone Age Man at War, coming up. All right, come on, you guys. You are going to war. We're going to make you savages. Now, most primitive societies find the idea of organized warfare completely incomprehensible. It's a waste of time, it's a waste of resources, but it seems likely that as the human population grew, pressure increased on territory for hunting. Now, fighting techniques, every weapon, has its own. In just a few moments of combat with these, you'll find out what works and what doesn't work. Most of the weapons we've made for ourselves are purely aggressive. They have very little defensive capabilities, but a skilled fighter could at least parry an incoming blow with your spear, give me a thrust, and you give me a, a cut to the head with your club. But most of us aren't skilled and we're not aggressive, so we all want some kind of protection. We've gathered some natural materials, and your next job is to make yourself some shields and some body armor. Go on, get going. Early man had no metal, so he depended on nature to provide materials for his armor. A suit of reeds, for example, was light and flexible. It could withstand a blow from a club, but not a thrust from a spear. Animal hides stretched over a frame made very good shields. 
If thick enough, they could stop almost anything in the Stone Age arsenal. Straight away, we're faced with one of the basic problems of personal combat. You can carry a shield, you can wear body armor, but it increases your weight. The more weight you have, the less agile you are, and you lose offensive ability. It's a balance. Now, there's something else that these uh, shields do very well. I'll show you. Sean, stand over there, will you? Now, usually, a missile weapon is the best thing to have, but not anymore. I want you to throw that spear at me. Come on, throw it right at me. Right, now I have a shield. I can defend myself against missile weapons. It forces me to get in close and dirty, so that's the kind of fighting we'll be learning, all right? When fighting at close quarters, the Stone Age warrior had to instantly adapt. Each opponent could have different weapons and defenses, so each situation called for different strategies. Well, that's good, excellent. Yes, very nice. All right, now, but you've got to be careful because I'm going to come back as soon as I can, hitting that shield, and it's not a strong shield, so come to my shoulder. Ah, 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 all right, I have an advantage, which is that, whoa, that I'm nice and light, whereas you are uh, pretty heavy. Okay, so I can get in close. You can hit really hard, all right? Okay, and high too. There, yeah? So when are you going to hit him? Hit him hard, 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 hard. Yeah? You've got to be savage. <laughs> All right. Have another go. We don't know how often it happened, but combat between Stone Age men must have been absolutely brutal. To look at them now, we would call them savages, even if our own times have produced weapons that can wipe out every one of us in a single day. It's time to get back to the main reason man needed his weapons, to hunt animals. Shields and armor are useless to the prehistoric hunter. Speed and surprise are vital. Our image of hunters is male, but there are two women in our group, and in the mythology of many societies, the goddess of hunting was female. All right, guys, gather your weapons. You are all going on a bear hunt. Now, it's not physical strength that catches game, it's skill. What skills do you need? First, you have to learn to move and hide in absolute silence. But there are snakes and mountain lions out here, so watch out. Second, you have to get in close. We've discovered that these weapons have a very short range. Third, you're all very smelly. It's not a joke. You have to stay downwind of your target. If he gets downwind, he will be hunting you and not the other way around. Fourth and most important, you have to plan your hunt as a group. That's the only way human beings can survive out here, as a group. You must ambush him together. You must hit him with every weapon you've got all at once. You have one major advantage. The bear that you are hunting will be me. Come this way. Somewhere in the depths of a Stone Age forest, our team is on a bear hunt. I have volunteered to be the bear, and their challenge is to find a proper place to ambush me as a group. That is the only way early man could successfully cut down prey using his primitive short-range weapons. They are looking for somewhere with plenty of cover and a good view of the approaches. My eyesight is better than a bear, but my sense of smell is pathetic. And in dense woodland, that's much more important. In situations like this, you have to rely on instinct. So, let's see if I can find them before they get me. The team finds a clearing, ideal for an ambush. Now they must work out how to lure me into it. They spread out, but I have no idea what they're planning. They're out there somewhere. They can probably hear me coming. You remember the thrill of hide-and-seek? How kids love to jump out and surprise you? Well, that thrill is rooted deep within us. Suddenly, we discover skills and sensitivities that most of us never use, but are still there, lying dormant within us from our earliest evolution. The team knows they have to corner me to get close enough for their weapons to make a kill. They could be anywhere, and my gut tells me they are nearby. 
A bear would have smelled them by now. But I continue to depend on my eyesight. I see you! I'm glad we put the bear in. I think I'd be dead. Come on. If you've seriously injured our bear, these flint blades would have really ripped into him. You'd have to follow him now and wait till he bleeds to death, poor beast. But you'd get him in the end. And you, with the decoy. Yeah, I got up there, I thought I'd escape from you, and I'd come straight down here into your traps. Very good. The plan worked. Well done. You win. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned how to make our own weapons and how to win as a Stone Age man in the hunt and in That's combat. It. These are the same lessons that our ancestors had to learn for real. Their only hope of survival lay in the defeat of all the forces of nature raised against them. And the only things that stood between them and extinction were their brains and their weapons.